Hello and welcome. I'm Jordan Hansen, and today we're going to talk about three ways that an underwriter will use Secretary of State data to help verify a business as they're assessing risk in loans, in cash advances, any kind of credit. I work with Cobalt Intelligence. We probably process hundreds of thousands of these lookups a month, helping funders, underwriters help with their information as they're going through this process of assessing risk. And so hopefully this is helpful for you. If you're an underwriter and you're just looking to understand better the use of Secretary of State data, if you are a business owner and you're gonna get a loan, maybe this is helpful for you or cash advance as you're going through this process. And just to take a step back, you have to realize underwriting, it's really a holistic view of a business. So when you're, they're trying to assess risk, really to see, can you pay back? And are you fraudulent? Those are probably the two things they're looking for. Is this person just wanna run away with the money? And second, is this person, what's the risk of this person being able to make these payments back as we expend this rent, this money to you? And it's not just, uh, it, it's not a binary, right? It's not like a yes or no. All of these things are flags that indicate, okay, higher risk, lower risk. And sometimes that risk is higher and that means higher terms. I mean, uh, the terms will not be as good. And sometimes that means it's lower where there's less risk. And so the terms can be better for you. And sometimes the risk is so high, they're just like, okay, we're not interested in taking this. We're worried that they won't make the payment. They're going to disappear or it's fraudulent. It's someone just trying to make this up. So let's talk about those three different ways. Again, Jordan Hansen. And as we go into this, we're going to talk about different Secretary of States and go through it. So the first ring thing they're really looking for, they want to know, does this business exist? So let's look over here. This is Delaware. This is the Delaware Secretary of State. Delaware is very business friendly and has an, a massive, an enormous amount of businesses registered with the Secretary of State. And also, I guess I should step back. If you're doing any kind of business, you're familiar with the Secretary of State, but really, it's really a chance for a business to register with the state. If you're doing any kind of business, if you're a sole proprietor, you do not have to register. But if you're doing any kind of business as like an LLC or a corporation, you're gonna have to register with the Secretary of State. So this is a number one indicator to say, hey, is this business legitimate? And we can see that here. Let's say Franklin 1203 Lovett Corporation, they searched, they wanted, they wanted, they registered their business, sorry, back in 1946, but that's not the important part. The important part I'm saying is, let's say they apply for a loan or credit and they come through and they say, hey, I wanna get this money. So the underwriter gets the file, they go, okay, let's check to see if this business exists. Now they go over here to the Delaware Secretary of State, they can see, sweet, I can see that this business registered. That's good news. So the fact that I know that they registered is, is great to know. That makes them a lot less likely to be fraudulent, at least. At least they have a valid business. Now, they want, now again, this isn't, the, the, the factors here are, is this company real? Does it exist? Do it, I had the business spelling correct? Is the same one? All these things are things they're looking at. They're trying to assess risk here. Okay, let's say they're registered, they're all good. Now, the second thing they're gonna probably look at, and this is really probably the second item, they're looking for here is the filing date. They want to look at this incorporation date and you can see it here. This is 1946. So if this business is still active and it's been around since 1946, risk automatically goes down immensely. This business, too many times there's businesses that are startups, they're brand new. And if they need cash and they ask for a loan and they're only been around for three months, it's a big risk. You don't know the, the business itself, the owner, he can be confident, but he doesn't himself know that this business is gonna be able to go, is, is gonna continue. It's a going concern or not, is kind of the word. So is this business re recently registered? If it's been registered since 1946 and is still active, which is gonna be our next thing we're gonna look at, then we know that, okay, this business is maybe a little bit less risk. So this can also change terms. Sometimes I've had funders look at it to say, hey, this person registered their business and they sign, they fill out an application and they send it into the funder or lender or whoever, and they put they started their business eight months ago, but it's possible they registered their business with the Secretary of State 14 months ago. So they can even get better terms in that case. So if they were 14 months ago and they are registered with the Secretary of State, then automatically they're a little bit less risky because this is a little less knee jerk. It, they can get better terms. So the longer they're registered, typically the less risk they are. So that's number two is how long ago did they register their business? Now, if we look at number three, which is, is the business in good standing? This is where sometimes it can get a little tricky depending on the state. In fact, there's two states specifically, Delaware and New Jersey, where they do not expose this, the business status over here on this page. As it says right here in red, oh, you can't see it. 
I'll show you. As it says right here in red, this is not a statement of good standing. So we look over here at Delaware, it's not a statement of good standing. And so what happens typically with a business is you register your business and then you have to do an annual report to update. Hey, I'm still in business. I'm still in business. Some states charge for this. Most of them do. There's a few that don't. Delaware has a franchise tax fee that you have to pay every year. And it's not based on your revenue. So it's kind of can be friendly. But if your business is smaller, it can be higher. Anyway, this is not a statement of good standing. So if you come over here, you can't really tell. It registered in 1946, sure. But is it in good standing? I don't know. You have to order it. So you can order the status here. It costs $10. If you want everything, you'll have to pay $20. Most underwriters don't do this. If they're going to want to know if this is in good standing, they're going to ask you for the documents. They're going to say, hey, send over those documents and we'll manually look. So Delaware, sometimes it's not a good chance for them to see if you're in good standing. Now, if you're not in good standing, let's go to a different example. So if we come over to here to Colorado, I'll search for pizza over there. And you look over here, this is in good standing, name changed. Now, this is withdrawn. So let's say this guy, Drew's Pizza, he registered. Then you'd see withdrawn and you'd be like, okay, Something's going on here. This is just a flag. It tells you, okay, maybe something's going on with this business. I need to understand why. If it's delinquent, that makes you think, okay, is this business still planning on continuing to run? What's going on here? Sometimes there's other states where they show out of good, out of compliance, which I think means, anyway, you can look over here. I even got the, the, how, the explanation of it. Why doesn't it show delinquent? That's because they didn't file their per periodic report, which sometimes costs money, sometimes doesn't. But all this tells you is that maybe this business is not doing well, something's wrong with it. Maybe it's, it's books, it's things aren't in good order. So these are things you can check. They will check for sure when they're doing underwriting. So those are really the three things they're looking for. They're going to say, hey, does this business exist? If it doesn't, if that business isn't anywhere, it's a corporation, an LLC, that's a pretty big concern. They're going to think, okay, is this fraudulent? Is this person making this business up? So they want to go check to see if that business exists. The second thing is they need to see how long ago it was formed. Was it short term? Was it long term? If it's three to five months, that's a lot higher risk than something that's been around for 20 years and it's still in good standing, which brings us to the final point, which is number three, is the business still in good standing? If it is, that automatically tells you they're probably paying their taxes they're, with the state. They're probably going through and registering and, and they're up, up, you know, they're taking enough steps to file in the annual report to make sure everything's good. The registered agent is still there. Everything's in good standing there. So they're doing something to maintain their business. If it's in delinquent, it's like a flag. And they say, okay, why is this delinquent? You know, what's going on here? Are you going out of business? Why aren't you doing this? This is risky. We don't want to give you money if you're going to disappear. So if you're applying for a loan, Make sure to think about that. Make sure those things are in good standing because an underwriter for sure is going to look at it. If you're an underwriter, those are things you should be looking at to think about. This is what the best underwriters are doing in the, in the industry right now. I'm Jordan Hansen. I hope this has been helpful. If it has at all, we do a lot of information on different data acquisition, using data to prove things. And so hit the subscribe, like, and we'll talk more. Mm -hmm.